Hmm, hmm. Hmm. Hi everyone, Anthony Fantano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of Mac Miller's Swimming, which I have already reviewed, but this isn't just any normal review. This is a Redux review, a re-review. Years later, I'm going back to this record, reassessing it, which happens. This is far from the first time I have revisited an album, especially one that I may have had some negative takes on in the past. And this time it's a record whose context changed greatly in a very short period of time, as just a month after its release, Mac Miller passed away of what was said to be an accidental drug overdose. Suddenly, the record's themes of inner demons, depression, and substance abuse came into a fuller and much more intense view, and Swimming became not just another record in a young artist's growing catalog, but Mac Miller's final statement. And at the time, I didn't really care for it. I had already been reviewing Mac Miller's stuff for years at that point, and personally felt like the versatile, sly and oddball vibes of Good AM had been his best work so far. I didn't really take to the much more mellow and melodic approach that he was going for on the following Divine Feminine, and in terms of mood and tone, I saw Swimming as a mere extension of this era that I guess I just wasn't really a big fan of at the time. Which is true to a degree, I don't think Mac could have made this record if not for what he attempted on the Divine Feminine, and I don't think we would have gotten such a wonderful singer-songwriter inspired posthumous record in circles if not for what Mac had done on this album. So now with time passing and having loved Circle so much upon its release, it's easier to go into this album now with uh, different expectations and a different mindset, and appreciate this record not just for the emotions Mac put into it, but also for its subtlety as opposed to its uh, lack of impact that previous records may have had that uh, may have had more attitude or maybe more of a, uh, a goofy angle. Now, truth be told, I'm still not a fan of some of the singing on this project. I found uh, pockets of it to be lacking in the same way that it was on the Divine Feminine, be it in his upper range on certain parts of the intro, or the sluggish falsettos on Perfecto. Also, giving one of Mac's most cutting vocal performances ever on the song 2009, a somewhat awkward auto-tune veneer, I think saps the intimacy from that moment, especially when the vocal layers are kind of piling up. So still, after all these years, I see flaws on this record, but even moments I'm not crazy about have their positive attributes that I think previously I was overlooking. Like how on 2009, Max lyrics culminate into this larger statement about isolation, his past, and having faith in a higher power. And there are some really gorgeous touches of guitar and electric piano on the intro cut. The chord progression is killer too. Even Conversation Part 1, with it being as repetitive as it is, does still have a potent energy to it that comes off very dejected. But Max still manages to showcase his wit with some uh, pretty hard-hitting one-liners. The slickness of lacing up my sneakers, I be running out of patience, or they ain't on my wave, but they wave in, which are lodged between surreal depictions of his growth in success, placing him in situations where he doesn't recognize his surroundings or faces. Meanwhile, some of the content of the lyrics feels like he's commenting on his own behavior, even though he's talking in the second person or uh, kind of speaking on some stand-in who is a lot like him, who is essentially going against his better judgment. The song Deneau feels very similar in that it is also a moody internal monologue about some light but manageable turbulence in a relationship that could be going better. Then the closing track, So It Goes, while I'm sure I wished that uh, this one had a grander sense of finality to it when I first heard the album, in retrospect, the song is actually kind of a beautiful moment of serenity and anticlimax. I know the view of this record overall has been skewed in a pretty dark way since Mac's passing, but the playfully lazy beat and cheeky rhymes on this one show Mac on kind of a bittersweet cliffhanger with this one. We have funny wordplay between seasoning and seasons, but also stinging references to narcissism and narcotics. Then we also get maybe the most telling lyric about his behavioral patterns on this song, uh, saying, my god, it go on and on, just like a circle, I go back where I'm from. The bright ascension of heavenly synthesizers that swallow the song whole toward the very finish are a nice touch too. So in retrospect, yes, there is definitely credit I should have been given to these tracks, and then there's highlights from the album that I loved originally, such as Hurt Feelings. The loose and watery guitar chords and booming bass on this one are incredible. It creates the sensation that feels uh, overwhelming, but simultaneously very simple and stark. Plus, this song features one of the stronger rap performances from Mac on the record, too. We also get one of the most ingenious lines on the entire LP as well, with New Crib, Blue Fountains, These Are My Surroundings, I've Been Going Through It, 
you just go around it. Small Worlds also features another one of my favorite beats on the LP. The weepy strings and quirky chord progression make this one feel like a kind of tongue-in-cheek musical theater moment. This is almost as whimsical as rap gets. Plus, Max Frank delivery and drawled articulation kind of brings a unique flavor to his uh, very dark bars about isolation, as well as self-improvement and living in the moment. The funky bass line on What's the Use definitely had a role in me warming up to this song over the years, too. I remember learning to play it not too long after the album came out, and it's just such a good groove. Plus, Max slick flows and sharp switch-ups on the song have me feeling like I want to go into the past and grab my former self by the shoulders and say, WHAT WERE YOU THINKING?! Though, at the time, I probably was not very crazy about uh, Max singing on the track with it being so low-key, almost whispered. For such a danceable track, it is more subtle than you would expect, but with time, I found this to be more of a uh, selling point for the album uh, than it is a mark against it. Because even though this track is quiet, it's still quite flavorful, especially with uh, Thundercat's contributions to it. The song Ladders scratches a similarly sleepy funk itch, but with this time, it brings a very tasteful horn section into the mix. Again, I can imagine that Max's boyish vocal harmonies didn't really hit for me at the time that this dropped, but I do find them more endearing in retrospect, and just, again, instrumentally, this thing is a light, classy, perfectly mixed and arranged piece of funk. Rap versus a rock solid too. And there are some other spots on this LP where Max vocals are doing more for me than they did in the past. Whether that be on the song Wings, which is a very gentle and depressive rap lullaby that feels like it was kind of setting the groundwork for what would eventually happen on Circles. And it's just one of many moments on this record where the presentation of words and sounds is so stark and so bare, it just feels like I am sitting alone with Mac and his thoughts. Really Really watching a man face himself down or look at himself in the mirror and uh, wrestling with what he sees externally and internally. There's a lot of personal baggage unpacked on the song Self Care 2, which does have one of the catchiest hooks on this LP hands down. Switch the time zone! But what do I know? Really kind of shows Mac in a rare moment of swagger on this LP. But deeper bars on this track reveal him to be struggling in climbing over metaphorical walls, falling, as well as not being able to trust himself. Plus, I love the tune that comes in on that syrupy beat switch on the back end. Oblivion, yeah, yeah, which really could have just been a song in and of itself. There are some more strong moments on the back end of the album, such as Jet Fuel, which is a super depressive smoker's anthem laced with lazy bits of guitar and bass, and lots of bars about using drugs and alcohol as an escape from your emotional problems, personal problems. It's one of the smoothest moments on the LP, but also one of the darkest as it illustrates this record's uh, struggles with substance dependency. The haunting autotune passage toward the end of the track is a very 808s and Heartbreak-esque, too. Those are my thoughts on pretty much all the tracks individually on this thing. And again, vast majority of the songs on this record have grown on me quite a bit over the years. As a result of that, I think a reassessment was in order, and I'm enjoying the album overall uh, quite a bit more than I once did as well. Because of that and how these songs connect together aesthetically and thematically for a pretty impressive and very personal overall picture, I'm definitely seeing this project as one of Mac's better works as opposed to one of his worst at the time that I originally reviewed it, and am now feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 on this one. Transition, and that is the Redux review. Thank you for watching. Over here next to my head is another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. You're the best. Appreciate you. Uh, let me know in the comments uh, your guys' thoughts, so on and so forth, and I will see you in the next one. Anthony Fantano, Mac Miller, forever.